Okay, so in the previous video when we were modeling the wheels, I forgot to create the brake for the wheels. So I'm just going to do the little uh, brake for them. And I'll show you in this video how I'm going to do that. So if I'll just select all the wheels that I don't want. Oops, that's not what I want. Let me just go into my select. No, nope, it's not the floor that I'm after. Go into my select brushes and I'll go back to, well, not select rect, select brushes, select lasso, it's better for this case. So if I just do a select lasso here and select all those guys and invert my selection. Okay, now I can just delete hidden and work on just one of these wheels. So I'll have to unwrap this again. There's some masking going on over there. Okay, so if I just Control shift and click this guy and I grow all and that's in modified topology and I'm just going to split hidden so that I that this is just in one subtool. Now I can go into my Z modeler and go into inset and I'm just going to inset one poly which is this poly. Ah, inset each poly. Okay, so I'm just going to inset that to create our break and go into Z modeler and just boom our break is done there and I just want to bevel this so I'm just going to go into bevel and create some uh, beveling here so some there 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 okay and probably there as well uh, that's actually uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. So I gotta unwrap it again because now we got new edges there. So I'll just do a quick save on this and unwrap this shape and I'll merge it down with UVs. Merge down. Okay, and now I'm just gonna repeat the process that I did on the other videos and place these on uh, all the wheels in the different places. Let's talk about UV space now and all of that good stuff. Ideally, I could send this into Substance Painter as an FBX, like um, I could go into my FBX exporter, they all have UVs, and I could export the whole thing as one object. And then in my Substance Painter, I would open up uh, each part, and I'll, I'll show you that. And remember that the wheels are sharing UVs, and they're all one subtool, with the, the the exception that this wheel part is one as one UV, this part that has the brake has one UV, and that has one UV. So the what we really have, if I morph UV, is just to check it out. I do a morph UV. You see that they're all on top of each other. There's three UVs there. They're shared by all the wheels, and a UV for each one of the objects I just mentioned. And that's going to cause obviously going to cause problems in a uh, substance painter. Now let's try and do that and see what result we have in substance painter. So I'm going to go into my FBX export and I'm going to export visible. So everything you see is going to go into one FBX file. I have S normals, smoothing normals uh, turned on and smooth normals amount to 100. And then I'm going to press export and I'm just going to uh, export it here into the desktop and FBX export and I'll call these IV test. Okay, so let's open it up in Substance Painter and I'll save you having to look at this. I'll just press new here. I'll select it. I go and I'll open up my IV text. So leave everything as it is. It's fine. I'll press open. Okay, I mean Okay, now I have my in my um, IV FBX file here, and it looks good, right? Okay, we have the holder right there. We have this bit that doesn't have a name, which is the poles. We have that, the base, and then that top bit, blah, blah, blah. Everything is separate there, and I could, if I press F1, so that I can look at my UV maps. So each one of these guys has 
its own UV map. Okay, and that looks terrible. Let me just move the light around. Uh, that's that's this guy down here. That's why it looks like it has faceted faces, but it doesn't. Okay, that's all good. And when I press the wheels, oh, as you can see, the three different parts are on top of each other. So you could separate the three different parts into three different subtools, and you could texture like that. But look at this. We have a lot of texture sets here, right? It's a lot of texture sets, especially because this is going to a game engine. And like I talked in some of, other, of my other videos, uh, each one of these texture sets is not just going to be one texture. You have the normal map, you have the ambient occlusion, you have the metallic, you have a bunch of, of maps. Uh, at least three maps are going to go there, three textures. So this would be crazy for uh, just one game asset, something like this. So what we're going to try and do is to create one UV map well, where all the texture sets are going to be included. So this way you only need three textures. One texture, RGB texture, that will have the metallic roughness and ambient occlusion. One that will have the normal and one that will have the base color. And I showed you how to do that in a previous video. Now, in this playlist, we're actually going to use the substance uh, Live Link with, uh, with Unreal. So we're going to use that instead, which uh, substance will create its own materials inside of Unreal. And we're going to have a look at that probably in the next video. Now, before I go into Maya and I start doing all this stuff, I wanted to show you that you can do this in ZBrush. So what I did is I merged all my subtools together into one subtool. This is one subtool. And now if I press unwrap, you can see that it's everything is in one subtool. So I only have one UV map. So if I, and now I don't even need to export FBX, I can just use the copy, uh, copy paste extension that we've been using in this series. And I'll do, I'll do a control F4 and discard, and then I'll do a paste normal. Okay, so now everything is in one UV and I cannot see my mesh. Uh, well, as you know, this is the first time I use this, uh, this tool and maybe some error occurred. Let's try FBX export this and I'm just pause the video so that you don't have to see this again. I know what the problem is actually. Uh, I didn't unflatten this. Okay, I didn't unflatten it. So if I unflatten and now paste, I should have my tool there. And all the UVs all are all in one object, right? And I can I could theoretically start texturing this. But this is a poor use of UV space. I mean, the wheels all, are all repeated, as you can see, this, this is the wheels right here in this area. So the wheels are repeated. We don't really need the wheels separate, so we can use just one UV space for all the wheels like we had before. And it's there's a lot of space that could be used inside of this UV uh, map. But yeah, this is one way you could do it. And then if you wanted to separate, thing, separate things, I'm just going to show you really quickly that you can use polypaint. So let's say, let's look, look at our polygroups. I could come here, now that I already have polygroups, I could come here to my polypaint right here. And I could say polypaint from polygroups. And now, if I copy this and go back into Substance Painter and paste it, what I can do here in Substance Painter after doing something like that is that I can come and create, for example, I like to use folders. So I would create a folder. Let's place this layer here and I'll just change the color of the layer so we know it's different. I'll make it red and in the folder I would add a black mask 
uh, actually sorry i would add a mask with color selection and what's that going to do is that it's going to allow me to pick color based on the id map but of course i'm being silly here and i didn't bake this so we need to bake it first so i'm just going to go do a quick bake and we're not going to use a high poly mesh so i gotta tick this box here and i'll just do a 1k for now and bake so after we have the baking done okay there was an error in the id there was an error in the id i'm gonna pause the video check out what their error is and i'll be right back okay it turns out that when you use this plugin that we've been using uh the copy to external and paste to external uh the id maps does, don't uh the vertex painting doesn't come along with it and that is what happened so i'm just going to do that folder thing again i'll pause the video and do that and now for my color selection when i pass pick color i can select the individual parts so I can select that part and I can say maybe I want that material to have to also be part of this folder. Okay, and so now I have a fill layer in that folder like that, but I can use perhaps, uh, I don't know, maybe an aluminium one in there. And I get that material in both those selected uh, uh, bits, right? there aluminium there aluminium there okay so that, that's how you can use the color IDs take advantage of the color IDs right there and we will use that but now let's go on and fix uh, this UV space because it's not being properly used All right because the video is getting too long I showed you already how you can do this in ZBrush so now in the next video we're going to do this in maya we're going to do some proper uvs in maya on the next video so i'll see you there